Hey there. Good day. Good morning, good evening, whatever time it is for you. Welcome back. Today we will move through some beautifully therapeutic yin slow flow style stuff for the hips and the spine um, and the mind, of course. But this practice, though you could do it any time of day, it is particularly good in the morning, especially if you know, you're one of those people that gets up out of bed and kind of wishes you could just stay in bed um, or if you feel really like achy or just stiff um, or like just like your body doesn't really feel like getting up and going right so this practice is for you um, just another little side note you could even start this practice from bed and just like roll off your bed after onto your yoga mat on the floor. Highly recommend it if you are a person that struggles with practicing regularly, put your yoga mat beside your bed. You'll get up, you'll roll off your bed and you can just start going at it right in the morning. It really works. I did it for years and years and years. Anyway, so let's get started, shall we? You might want a couple of blocks. You might want a blanket. But to start off, we're coming down onto the back. And take a moment to lengthen out your neck. So make sure that you can inch your skull away from your shoulders. I got a few adjustments already just from doing that. Inch your shoulder blades underneath so they feel flat. And then draw your navel toward your spine so you can adjust your lower back to the mat. So Wiggle your hips around, do what you need to do. Get your back flat on the ground. The back of your pelvis is flat. Soles are flat, soles of the feet. Shoulder blades, the back of the head. So now that you're all settled in, belly keeps drawing in and your knees pull into the chest, hands on the kneecaps, legs stay together. Start to draw nice, easy circles with the knees. And we want to do this at a fairly moderate pace. So, of course, if you need to go super slow today, then you do that. But if you can, just start to really stir things up. Like, no need to go like fast, fast. Just imagine like you're gently stirring a cup of coffee or tea or something like that. Smooth out any of the bumpy spaces in the back of the hips. And then nice and easy, just come to stillness and start to draw circles the other way. So noticing the natural movement that comes through your hips as you draw these circles, but smoothing out the edges of the circles to the best of your ability here. And if it feels really crunchy for you today in the back of your hips, just know that doing this, these practices that are here in this group will get rid of that gunky crunchy stuff you just need to do the practices so if you're still feeling super tense and you um feel like you've been practicing for a long time go to the somatic guide in the group here and do a 30-day reset nice and easy come all the way to stillness now open your arms wide palms down onto the ground so your feet stay off the mat your legs stay together your shoulder blades are still flat make the adjustments that you need to and then just start to rock the knees side to side so you'll notice your hips also come along for the ride and now as we're doing this here is what we're really focusing on the shoulders so you need to keep your shoulders flat the whole time. And we're going to keep penduluming the knees side to side. 
and you can start to increase the depth at which your knees reach and lower. Again, though, you're going to play with those edges while maintaining the foundation through the shoulders. So if you start to feel one of your shoulders lift, then you found your edge, work on grounding it and your knees just sweep back to center and just keep going side to side. It does not matter how deep you end up into your twists, you're not landing your legs down on the ground. Breathe in, breathe out. Beautiful. Okay. So now just slow down a bit, but keep rocking your knees side to side. So now the next time your knees come over to the right, find your edge, hold there. And think of just inching the knees to your right elbow, just like a millimeter closer. You're still hovering and then nice and easy. The knees sweep back through to center and to the left. Now find your edge to the left. Think of the knees drawing a little closer to your left elbow. You're still squeezing the legs. They're not resting on the ground. And we come back to center. Over to the right, same thing with control. Edge your knees up a little closer to your right elbow. Keep the legs hovering, hold. Left shoulder is down, down, down. Think of reaching your left knee away from you, away from you, away from you. Let your outer thigh come down on the right side. Land in a twist. So notice your left shoulder has stayed relatively rooted here. Notice the space you're creating through the left side of your body. Now draw your belly in. Think of knees moving to right elbow as you flow up and back to center and lower the knees to the left. So find your edge. Remember the right shoulder stays down. Inch your knees toward the left elbow just that tiny bit. And then think about your right knee moving away from you, over to the left. Keep reaching it over to the left. Reach it. Your right shoulder's down. Reach the knee. You feel your outer left thigh and leg come down, and you can soften here. Notice your right shoulder glued down to the ground. And inch your knees closer to your left elbow and draw your legs back to center. Hands come onto the kneecaps, draw circles with the knees. And then go the other way. And come back to center. Let the soles of the feet come down. Navel draws in, your low back is glued to the ground. Reach your hands toward your thighs and reach so much that your arms straighten and your elbows are off the ground. And then from here, your head is neutral. Start to draw chin to the chest and then inch your fingers toward your knees a little bit more. And then inch your toes a little bit further forward. You're going to play with the distance of how much you need to move the toes forward. We sit up a little bit more, crawling the fingers up toward the knees. See if you can cup the palms around your knees, keep the soles of the feet down. And then reach your fingers forward and sit the rest of the way up. Hands come onto the shins. Slide your heels in toward your hips and let the toes float. So now you're finding a balance. Adjust so your hands are behind your calves and float the shins parallel to the mat. Lift your chest while you're here. And then hold, 
Bring your hands down to the mat behind you. Elbows are bent, palms are down. Then straighten your legs to your edge. You could bring your elbows down if that feels better for you here. We're circling down and over to the right and around and up. Circle again, around and up. Three more times this direction. And two, so just work on the stabilization. It doesn't matter how big your circles are. Remember your forearms could be down. Now reverse, go the other way. Notice differences between the sides. Three more. Find the little shakes. And one more. Beautiful. Let your knees bend. Sit up. Scooch your hips back so you can straighten out your legs. Now, of course, you might want to have your knees bent here. We're sitting tall through the spine. The point is to have your hips neutral so that you can eventually fold forward. So knees bent or legs straight, hip distance apart with the legs either way. You could start with hands behind you and on an exhale, just fold yourself forward. So it's not so much about how deep you fold, it's about how much can you become aware of your abdominal strength, drawing the navel in and back and then push into your fingers to bring the heart forward. This is what's gonna help create space in your low back area. So now you can choose to stay here or your hands can walk forward onto your legs or even onto your feet. Make sure your toes face upward to the ceiling. Feel your chest draw a little further to your toes as your navel comes closer to your spine. And then nice and easy, release, sit up. Sweep the feet over to the right as we come into deer pose. So bending through the knees, making adjustments so you may want to sit on a blanket here you may need support for your outer left thigh with a block or a blanket bring the hands to your hips and just focus on getting both sit bones down on the ground now that might be a really long journey today so if that's the case for you, make sure you've got a blanket underneath your left butt cheek. This will give the right side of your hips time to loosen up a little bit and lower. So otherwise, we sit nice and tall on a breath in. Let's reach the hands up. Palms face one another. And then interlace the fingers and flip the palms up. Take a nice big stretch and reach. You can feel like you're lifting out of your hips here. And then nice and easy, just release the hands come down. Lean to the left so you can sweep your right leg all the way forward. You'll inch your left knee to face more forward so you can stack your right one on top coming into a shoelace pose or gomukasana. Now, of course, you could have your bottom leg straight here as well if this feels like too much today. So choose the variation that works for you today, just for today, that's it. If you're stacking the right knee over the left, we work the shins parallel, <laughs> air quotes parallel, because one day it'll happen, maybe, okay? But otherwise, hang out. Sit bones, we're evening them out to press them into the ground, balanced from left to right side. Let's reach the arms up to the ceiling on a breath in. Bend your left elbow, right hand onto the left elbow as you pat yourself on the back with the left hand. Feel the shoulder blades drop down a little bit. <clears throat> you 
Now you could stay here or your right hand can sweep out and then down and around back to reach the fingers up to grab the left fingers and you can sit tall here. Again, it doesn't matter if you get there or not. We just want to enjoy the variation that we can be in today. Feel the navel draw in a little deeper. And then you could slowly hinge your upper body forward, release the grip of your hands from wherever they were, bring them to the mat ahead of you, and you can fold forward. Now, keep your weight in your hips. That's why we have the hands on the mat, so you can help push your weight back just the tiniest bit. But you drawing awareness in from your navel to your spine is also going to help you with that even more. Breath is in and out of the nose. Ease the tension out of your jaw. Maybe you could hinge that tiny bit deeper with the possibility of your forehead resting on your top knee, or you could have a block there as well, and you could place your forehead on the block or just hang out. See if you can direct the breath all the way down your spine into your hips. Yeah, nice and easy. On a breath in, just start to walk yourself up. Lean back enough so you can easily just undo your legs here. Give them a little shake. Then we'll go to the other side. So sweeping the feet to the left in your deer pose here. And we're just here for a moment, mostly to get the hips feeling good. So maybe you have a blanket under your right sit bone. We want the left side to drop just as easily as the right. So maybe bring your hands to your hips and you can just kind of move around a little bit and find the areas that might be a little tighter. Not that they're all gonna loosen today. It's a process, right? Like this is a lifetime practice. This isn't like, oh cool, I'm doing like a week of yoga. Like, no, like this is <laughs> everyday thing. This is body maintenance, body maintenance basics. So let's come all the way back to stillness, sit tall, bring your hands up to the ceiling, interlace the fingers, flip the palms up and reach out of yourself. Isn't that just fantastic? Just the smallest little adjustments can help us lift out of the hips, keep your shoulders down and away from the ears, your navel draws in and then we'll release, take your time, Hands come out and down. We'll lean to the right so we can sweep the left foot around front. Now you're gonna choose to either inch your right knee over to the center line and stack the left one on top, or you'll shift the right leg to the center line and lengthen the leg out. Either way, we're working in a similar position, finding what works for our body today. So, Get really settled in, make sure that you have the prop support necessary for your body so you can sit here and not struggle. So get nice and tall, close your eyes. Feel your breath moving in and out of your nose with ease. And notice the ease of your breath. 
it's not something we need to think about at all when we're in the moment moving through our body, you know? From here, the right fingers could reach up to the ceiling and then you could bend the elbow to pat yourself on the back. Left hand comes on to right elbow and just give yourself a nice big stretch here. Just guiding the right elbow slightly to the left. Shoulder blade comes down though. And of course you can choose to stay here or left hand can sweep down and around back and then the fingers reach up for the right fingers in your monkey grip. Does it need to happen? No, find the space that works for you. Focus on your breath, sit tall, lean back into your arms that little bit. Now contain through your core, draw your navel inward, start to round the upper body to fold forward, release your hands with ease, palms to the mat, Keep the weight in your hips and continue to let your upper body soften. And then find your edges. For me, the edges come through a little bit faster on this side, so I need to move slower. Maybe that's the same for you. Maybe it's the opposite. The point is to observe and to listen. So this is where, you know, people often can get caught up is in the listening. We may hear that the body says, hey, that's enough, or, you know, hey, there's tension here to pay attention to. But with the acknowledgement, we don't really listen to the message. We just say, oh, cool, yeah, it's just like that. But there's a message underneath the discomfort, the tension, perhaps the even years of chronic inflammation or discomfort, like there's a root to all of it. And it doesn't all need to be discovered today, but just li practice listening to your body, practice doing a little bit less, because we often choose to do more than we really need to. And not that that's bad, but learning how to rest and relax is equally as important as the action and I know many more people that struggle with relaxing than I do people that struggle with taking action so just observe and notice what kind of person you are for me it takes a bit more effort to relax or it used to it's not as much now now I'm pretty pretty good with both but it's easier to take action for many of us so just see what you can do to soften for another breath or two here And then take your time, come all the way up. Lean back enough so you can easily undo through your legs. Give them a lovely shake. Beautiful. And then we'll just draw the soles of the feet together. Let the knees open wide. Hang on to your ankles here. So you can just pull your chest forward with the elbows pulling back. So don't flare the elbows out and around the shoulders. Pull them in and back to open your chest. And maybe even take a little dip down. So soles of feet are together, but just the baby toe, the pinky toe side are pushing together. The big toe sides will start to open like a book little bit by little bit. And then inhale yourself up. Exhale back forward. You got it. Inhale up. Exhale, fold again forward. Hang out here, bring your hands onto your knees. Gently guide your knees closer to the ground. Your feet will open more like a book. Chest reaches forward. Breathe in, breathe out. So notice my elbows are up now so I can better put weight into the knees with kindness and bring the heart forward. And then nice and easy, sit up, ease off with your pressure, lean all the way back, close the knees together, give them a little shake. 
All right. So from here, just make sure you have a block handy dandy and we'll turn to come down onto the back. Grab your block. Now you can do the lowest setting or the medium setting. See what works best for you. Your shoulder blades are flat, your belly draws in, slide your hips forward and up to bridge pose. And just notice where you go in your bridge pose. Then put the block underneath accordingly. So if you can slide it under with ease on the second setting, then do that. If it's the first one, then do that and let your hips come down onto your block. Make sure your shoulder blades are flat. Might want to lengthen out your neck a little bit here. Sink the hips. So we'll get an extra little stretch for the psoas muscles here. So let's lengthen. Actually, no, stay exactly where you are first. Bring your right knee in so it stacks above your right hip. And then you can choose. Your hands could come behind the right thigh or in front of the shin. And then your left heel, drag it along the ground to lengthen your left leg out. As you lengthen your left leg, keep reaching the toes away from you and gradually bring your right knee in closer to you. But you need to be aware like of the balance of your block, of the balance of your breath. Notice to make sure that all 10 toes are facing upward. Like pay attention to all the little details. Reach your left toes away from you as your right knee comes in. You might feel this in the hip flexors as well. I know I do today. Breathe in, breathe out. And then nice and easy, start to drag your left heel in, plant the foot on the mat, and then gently release the right foot down. Left knee draws in. Hands can come behind that thigh or in front of the shin. I suggest to start easier, you do you. As available, the right heel can drag along the ground, reaching the right leg away as the left knee comes in and finding your balance here. Make the adjustments you need to for this stretch to work for you. And so often people will struggle with like, for example, pain in the lower back and they will try to address that pain by always addressing it in the lower back. But often it's because of tension in the front of the body or even lack thereof um, for why we have tension in the back. It's like lack of support from the front side of the body. It can also be the way that your hips are positioned. Like there are so many things that can contribute to tension that going to the area that hurts is actually just a small fraction of solving the issue. Couple more breaths here. And then take your time, let the right heel drag in to bend the knee, slowly release, left foot comes down. Shoulder blades are flat, bring the soles of the feet toward each other and let your knees open up and your arms are long.
Nice, easy breath in and out of the nose. And then nice and easy, close the legs together, plant the feet on the mat. Now just lift your hips a tiny bit off the block, like just take your weight off the block and then slide it out from underneath you and lay your spine down top to bottom. So pull your belly button inward, lay everything down nice and easy. Notice how your entire back is flat on the ground. Now drag your left heel along the ground and straighten the leg. Notice your back is still flat on the mat. And then drag your right heel along the ground to straighten the leg. And notice that your back is still flat. Close down through the eyes. Feel your breath draw in through your nose to fill your belly. And then just let it go. Complete breath in. Notice the expansiveness happening through the lungs, through the belly, through the back. And let it go. Feel everything soften and release. So continue with the breath. And scan through your body, scan through your being. Soften through your muscles. Let your tongue relax into your jaw. Enjoy a lovely long stretch and reach through the body on your next inhale. And release. Drag both heels along the ground to bring your knees into the chest. Give yourself a hug and a rock side to side. And then nice and easy, roll yourself up into a seat, however you'd like to come up. Sit nice and tall, let's bring palms to Anjali Mudra at heart center. Close the eyes for a moment. And set an intention for the rest of your day. Allow that intention to be to carry through this feeling of connection, this feeling of being refreshed 
and calm and at ease with exactly who you are in any given moment. Let's draw a complete breath in of loving gratitude into ourselves and a full breath out of loving gratitude for everyone else. And thank you for our yoga time today. Namaste. Hmm. Thank you, everyone. I hope you feel wonderfully refreshed. And if you did this from bed, well, I hope you're ready to get out of bed now. So enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for being here and see you again soon. Much love. Bye.